Welcome to Strange and Scary Story Talk. I'm Heather Nani, and tonight we're discussing Edith Nesbitt's In the Dark. If you haven't read In the Dark, please turn this off, go read it, and come back because this is full of spoilers. That said, Edith Nesbitt, best known in England, British novelist um, known for her children's stories, The Railway Children, Five Children and It. She's not so much known for her ghost stories. But everyone has their demons, and we'll discuss Nesbitt's demons at the end of our discussion of the story. To give you a time frame, In the Dark was written in 1910. Um, Nesbitt was born in 1858 and passed away in 1924, so she was mainly a writer of the Edwardian period. So, our story, In the Dark. We have two school chums from the time they're in elementary school. We have Winston, the narrator, and we have um, Haldane, who is his friend, and then we have um, Visker, who is this other friend that really annoys the hell out of these other two. Visker is the kind of guy that you just don't want to hang out with. He's described as a prig, which they define that as he's a vegetarian and a teetotaler, a Christian scientist, but his worst offense is that he knows things that he shouldn't. Turns out he knows a lot more that he shouldn't and it's inexplicable. So anyway, we have these two chaps that go to school together and this other dude that kind of hangs out with them and bothers them. Winston, the narrator at the beginning of the story, however, starts it off with saying, talking about um, Haldane. I don't know if he, it was madness. I don't know if it was if he was truly haunted or I don't know if Haldane had such a high sensitivity and neuroses that he was attracted to them but they became one. That's how the story starts out. It's all very confusing until you get to the end and then it all makes sense. Anyway, so we have Winston, our narrator, at the end of his time in Oxford, and he's got to go abroad because he's sad. And this Visker character has told him stuff that he didn't want to hear, hear that was true, and he's really pissed that this Visker guy knows about it. Anyway, Winston goes off. He comes home after a year. He goes to, to India, and he's all excited to see his pal, um, Haldane, who is supposedly this great and merry, this larger than life kind of guy, and he's big and jolly. When Winston goes to the inn where Haldane is staying, he finds a very different person. This guy is, he can't describe him as anemic and pale, his eyes are pale, he's thin, he's lost all his energy, and um, Haldane just says he's got to move out of this room where he's staying because there's something up and he's not okay. Um, Winston goes, gets some takeaway, comes back. They eat in this inn with a candle. So everything is dark, but they're eating. And Haldane keeps looking over his shoulder like there's something in the dark corners of the room. But he won't tell Winston what it is. Anyway, um, Winston goes home, he comes back another day, and Haldane is gone. So he doesn't see Haldane for a year. One morning, Haldane shows up at his door, and now, the way Winston describes it, if he was ghastly before, now he's ghostly. So Haldane is no better, he's worse, and he goes to hang out with Winston, and then he explains exactly what's going on. Well, he murdered Visker, because Visker, pretty much ruined his engagement to an unnamed girl and um, then the girl died and Visker managed to do this by saying things that he shouldn't have known but happened to be true. Now the reader doesn't know what this stuff is but it's something. So anyway, he explains to Winston how he strangles Visker and Winston's not believing it. He's thinking that um, Haldane is having some sort of breakdown. Anyway, Haldane talks about how he describes how he strangles Visker and pretty much Winston's like, well, that's cool because that guy sucked anyway. But then Haldane's like, no, 
but let me tell you now what's happening to me. Then he comes about, he reveals that Visker has come back to him. After he killed Visker, before he killed Visker, Visker said, because you know Visker knows things, I wouldn't do that because you're not going to be able to get rid of the body. And Haldane's like, yeah, no. So he strangles him, he gets rid of the body. It's a year later, according to Haldane, on the year anniversary of the murder of Visker, he's in his room and he looks on the rug and there is the corpse of Visker. Now, what's weird is this is not a decomposed body. It's not all like icky and smelly. It's hard and solid. So apparently Haldane, the story that he tells is he hides the body and then this body keeps showing up. He's on a train and he looks up and there's the dead body of Visker again, his corpse again, and he throws the corpse off the train. And I think there's another moment where he gets rid of another corpse of this guy. So Winston, the narrator says, dude, let's go abroad because these are hallucinations and you're just going mad and we've got to get away and it's going to be better. So he takes them away and apparently they have a great time until one night. One night, they are sharing a room. Um, Winston's sleeping on the chair. Hall, Hall, um, Dane is in the bed and Haldane wakes up. And he's like, I left everything to you, Winston. And Winston doesn't want to talk. He wants to sleep. And Haldane says, I need a glass of water. And like he gets very childish. And Winston's like, okay, I'll get you a glass of water. And then Haldane says, no, don't leave me in the dark. I'll die in the dark. So anyway, we have the scene where Winston and Haldane have to go down in the end to the kitchen and Haldane's like really close to him and they get water and they come back up. And um, now remember, there's no electricity at this point. They're using candlelight and, well there was electricity, but they're not using it. And anyway, they get into the room. There's no more candlelight, it's pitch black. Haldane starts crying, light the candles, light the candles, he's going to kill me. He screams, next thing we know, Winston lights the candles, Haldane is dead, and behind him is a corpse. So, turns out the way the story neatly wraps up is that the corpse in the bed was because when they came upstairs in the dark, um, it wasn't the right room. They went in the wrong room, and there was a guy that died in the bed, and Haldane thought it was this Visker's corpse, and then so he dies of a heart attack. And it turns out the guy on the train, apparently Haldane got in the wrong cab again, and it was somebody else that had died for some other reason. And that's the end of the story. The story is weirdly creepy. It's atmospheric. It is infantile, in a way. Like, when we think of these corpses, the corpse is never decomposing. These corpses are always like in rigor mortis. They're rock solid. But it's, it's infantile, but like our dreams are and, and our nightmares. When we have nightmares, we think of horrible monsters and scenarios and the dark becomes the enemy and we become childlike and fear makes us childlike, doesn't it? We cry when we're afraid. We become irrational when we are, we're afraid. When we're really afraid, we piss our pants. I mean, how much more infantilizing can something be than fear? So it makes sense that this ghost story, that ghost stories, this ghost story is childlike and yet it works. But it works because the writer herself wasn't just a merry writer of children's stories. She had a lot of demons in her own life. Nesbitt herself said that she was plagued with phobias and fears and sleeplessness. Her life, by according to some standards, was bizarre. She married this um, Hubert Bland, who was originally a bank clerk, then a journalist. They both belonged to the Fabian Society together. And he was the most licentious man that you can imagine. When she met him, she was seven months pregnant with their oldest child, but he also had a child from the caretaker of his own mom. And then he starts, Nesbitt marries him, and then he starts having an affair with 
Nesbitt's best friend, Alice Houston. They have Houghton, I'm sorry. They have two more kids. They keep it a secret. Nesbitt acts like she's their mother, but it's really Houghton that's raising the children. There's a lot of jealousy and infidelity. You see infidelity in the story, or not infidelity. You see a little bit of a menage a trois thing going on in, in the dark between Winston and um, Haldane, Haldane and this his fiance that had died. Um, Nesbitt, Bland, and Houghton lived as a as a threesome forever. Um, and then you have real tragedy that happened in Nesbitt's life. When her son Fabian was 15 years old, this was in 1900, he was supposed to, he had his tonsils out in his house and now there's some conflicting stories when it comes to Nesbitt, so I want to be careful saying this, but what many writers and journalists had said was that they, the parents, forgot to make sure that the, the child didn't eat 24 hours before the surgery. Anyway, he ended up choking on his own vomit and dying. So she had the death of a child. She had a spouse that was unfaithful. Um, and she had these phobias and fears that, that plagued her throughout her life. So it makes sense that this woman of children's fiction, and when you understand the children's fiction too, it wasn't as light as it may appear on the surface that she went to the ghost story and wrote these stories, and she wrote them well. She wrote them well because she can write a, a story as bizarre as in the dark, and it works, and it's a fun and great read. So I'm curious what you think. I'm curious about what you think of In the Dark. I'm curious what you think about the function of the ghost story in general. Do we really need it as a way to kind of filter our own demons that we have so that we don't have to go to bed at night and have even more bizarre dreams than the actual stories on the page? So if you like this episode, please subscribe and thank you and we'll see you next time.